The following is a match between Joseph and I. Uh, he was medieval and I twin sons. This was old twin sons, old Titans battalion. Um, second generation of the battlefields back when we were doing the 5 by 12 as the standard. And uh, twin sons honestly hadn't changed all that much yet. There was severe problems going on with uh, us discovering how to use it properly and not playing it safe or playing it slow at all, which is how Medieval had won uh, close to f even in the years prior to us sitting down and actually starting balance tests the way I intended. Now, at the culmination of the uh, line of reasoning that came from this, we ended up doing game field testing for Twin Suns with uh, embers and on the smaller board, accounting for a lot of things. But uh, if you want to skip my explanation for Medieval and Twin Suns' movesets, uh, the timestamp is in the description down below. With that, let's begin. This is the Medieval Battalion, based on chess. With a few exceptions, the rules are pretty much exactly the same as chess, and with that being said, I'm going to point out the differences that this version in the game I'm about to show you had. As you can see, this board is 3 by 8, and that is your territory in Titan's Battalion. Your territory attaches to the side of the battlefield, which is that larger board. Now, while the pawn is on the battlefield, currently it can move sideways. It used to be that it could move backwards, forwards, sideways, and capture on all four diagonals, allowing your pawns to mutually protect each other much like a bishop and a pawn would if they were one away. But that was deemed a little bit too strong of a defense and ended up being part of an overall uh, pawn nerf later. And this is the second pawn nerf that happened because the pawns used to be able to move in all directions previously at all times. Then it was just the battlefield. Now it is only sideways on the battlefield to prevent that mutual protection from happening. King is the same as before. Pawn uh, on move 1 can move forward 2, just like normal. When it's in a territory and just a territory, is exactly as you expect. And then it has that sideways movement on the battlefield, just like I just said. Knights are exactly the same. Bishops, exactly the same. Rooks, exactly the same. Queens, exactly the same. We, uh, in Titan's Battalion, can actually castle in all four directions, not just to either side. And we can castle no matter who has moved, whether or not you're in check, uh, and no matter how many times the two pieces have previously moved. Um, the only real uh, line that supports this in this diagram, because the king is in its starting position, is uh, this rook being forward shows that you could castle here. But... If the king was, just for example, moved to the left one, it would still be able to castle with both rooks in, now in the queen's position um, because the spacing is still correct. Uh, en passant is the same as normal. Pawns promote uh, as normal on the back of the board when you reach the end of the enemy territory. However, in this case, um, on this game, you can promote as soon as you reach the enemy territory due to the width. You'll notice that this is almost exactly, uh, this is 9 to get to this square rather than 8. But uh, it's still almost the same number of turns to promote, and that's why we chose that. Okay, with that out of the way... Don't worry about the curved shit yet. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's move on to Twin Suns. The graphics aren't as pretty because we haven't had the pretty graphics commissioned yet because this one's still a work in progress. Uh, it is very different now. I'm just going to allow the diagrams to speak for themselves on what it is now and explain what it was. So all five of these pieces are what we now call the hearth. I'm going to refer to them as flares for the duration of this video due to that being what they were called at the time. The flare is now a slightly weaker version of this piece. Now the hearth uh, can move as a knight to these squares. In fairy chess this piece is called a squirrel. Now the suns uh, are they move as a queen would and then there's one special rule in addition to this called the orbit so this is how the orbit works let me just throw these pieces out here an orbit allows a flare or a hearth um, when the pieces become different later to move to in a rotationally equivalent square. So in this case, this is a rotationally equivalent square from the sun, and it also allows it to move to these squares, but it can't move out here because that's off the board. So to recap, if you're orbiting around this sun, that flare could move to these squares. If you're orbiting around the Titan, which you can, it would move to those squares instead. And if you're orbiting around the other sun, it could orbit to these squares. And thus, that is how orbiting works. One more thing. Um, the orbiting move cannot capture. So if, for example, the sun was here and you wanted to orbit this flare forward, it could not capture that pawn even though it's the right square. It, this, uh, this rule is actually kind of hard to see at first, um, but once you get used to it, you just sort of uh, treat it kind of like you would a knight with uh, the skew being the same and you looking in relation to the other sun. Which is why anytime I'm making arrows describing how the flare would orbit, I'm going to point it at the sun first and then to the final square so that I can more easily see personally how that works. See? Makes sense. All right, so this is a game between myself and Joseph very early on in Twin Suns testing. Uh, this was right about when we started really realizing how to play Twin Suns and thus discovered the issues and thus had to move forward. Um, it was also right before we realized the problem with this size board, which we were originally doing. It's 5 by 12, which doesn't allow for the interplay between the um, weaker units, such as pawns and knights, to actually happen properly. Um, yeah, but I'm going to use this board because it came up a lot in uh, that discussion on how orbiting works at its best. Especially on a board this large, you can really see it. So I'm going to demonstrate. So the flares start in these positions, and one of the most common moves to start with is actually to move here. And this happens in this game, which is then followed up by a queen out to here, and you start orbiting. But the question is where exactly do your orbits end up? And we're going to start with just these and the idea of your suns on these possible squares. Your starting board is a little bit deeper than your opponent's, so the ones that work best are the ones that are closest. And for the sake of it, we'll look at these as well. So it may seem counterintuitive to look at all the... Uh, initial positions the sun might take 
to start with, but that's not true. It's actually very helpful because it gives you rules of thumb that work anywhere on the board. Now, in this case, uh, the mirrored spot for the center of the board ends up here. Do, do, do. Yeah. The initial mirroring ends up here, and that's anywhere along this line as the midline. You have these orbits available to you. And uh, by extension, if you move out one more, that midline will actually orbit you here as well from this center spot. And then rather than orbiting this guy in uh, from here, it would orbit this guy in instead from here. So being closer causes your front line to end up in their back line, and being further causes your front line to end up in their front line, while their, your back line only has access when you're further away. So that already tells you that on this particular size board, you want to be here because it gives you more total orbit options. Because if you are here, then you don't have access to these three, right? And that's not including the other direction. Now, what I'm going to point out now is simply uh, if the sun is here, let's just move it there for the sake of it, because this is the one that comes up in this game. That means that this flare can orbit to here, this flare can orbit to here, and so on. And it's really quite easy to see because it's the same pattern of everything. The orientation does not change. But because we're orbiting, that also means that along this diagonal, you could also, for example, orbit this piece to here and vice versa up top. But that also opens up for this guy here. So just real quick, these flare positions can rotate or orbit to these enemy positions. And if we just flip it real quick, it also goes there. Now we would also be able to go here and here, but that's off of the board. And just drawing a diagonal to this open corner really emphasizes this. Now with that out of the way, and you understand that, oh well, I'll make one more representation. Now that means that with the default flare position, anywhere on the board, you end up with every other square of that color as your possible orbit positions without accounting for the exact position. So these are pretty much guaranteed across the board, right? This weird uh, quarter, this quarter of the board is the defaults. Now if you happen to be, for example, uh, let's use yeah, let's use here, no, let's use here as an example again. Not only is this piece able to move where you expect, but also it's able to move to another square. This does get a little bit more complicated, because if the sun and the flare are not on the same color, they get more total options. Mostly on accident. So, for example, here, across the midline, it still orbits to the same square here, right? But the other square is going to be four out diagonally and three out orthogonally the other way, is here. Which, you'll notice, is not part of that initial grid. It's one off-kilter diagonally, and that's the advantage. You want your flare and sun to be on opposite colors for maximum coverage because it gives you slightly different. Because if they're on the same color, you're stuck. 
in this type of grid. But if they're on opposite colors, you end up with a possibility space that's more like this type of grid. And with the one forward as the opening back when this was the formation, you also had one flare which had a different set of options. <sighs> it's also unfortunate on this particular board that if we go back to the original setup, that all of the squares that are on the perfect spacing away are of the same color. Now, these were the things you ended up thinking about with Twin Suns, and still do, don't get me wrong, but it's now a smaller subset of what it is. Uh, it was recommended that we actually make a uh, sort of board color overlay when we finally get to making it in the app that shows uh, the rotationally equivalent squares along the best midline, which in this case would be these squares in particular being directly highlighted um, since they are the, uh, the target squares along these two midlines. One more quick note before we begin. Uh, on a board this size, you actually end up uh, drawing squares using whatever the enemy territory is in order to determine a normal board position. So the most important squares to attack Medieval, which as Twin Suns is usually the aggressor, this is where the majority of the game will be played, are actually these four. Just like in normal chess, you want to control those four squares. And because I don't have any pawn-type pieces that aren't going to be super slow to get there, I'm more than likely going to be able to contend those squares, particularly uh, if at some point in the game, I'm not saying this happens, but if at some point in the game I have a sun here and a sun here, those are the normal uh, Fanchetto-type wooden shield positions for the bishop. So it applies the same way as it would on a normal board on the strength. All right, and this game predictably starts with flare here, pawn forward, sun out in order to enable orbits. This is the mistake of the game. This move loses the game, and it loses the game because not this. I should have, uh, as the twin suns player, immediately pressured this, but that's not what happened. Instead, uh, we kind of transpose into how that would have worked out, because after sun here, pawn forward, flare forward, we have a very similar position to what actually happens in the game, orbiting the flare around that sun. But what actually happened was I was aiming this flare at this square. So, I moved it here. They move the pawn forward, and now I begin the pressure. Uh, they're forced to move back, which was the best move in the other scenario anyway, and then I orbit in. The pawn pushes forward to threaten my flare, but it is too late. They let me get an extra turn of tempo when they should have been developing something else. The flare moves forward. Um, there's lots of things going on here. For one... Uh, this flare is targeting here and threatening to trade down with a bishop and gain a rook for free. Also, uh, this flare is threatening to do something similar on this square, but trade with a queen and take out the rook still. Or potentially try to take out the rook, but the queen trade for the flare happens instead. And then uh, the bishop is exposed and has no escape then with check on the way, and it's just a mess. Uh, this move also I want to point out, because of this sun's position, its equivalent flare rotation is here, which ends up mattering a lot when this square becomes open later. So there's just a barrage because this flare's equivalent square is also here. So there's an argument to be made the way back here, I was too slow, and instead of moving here, I should have immediately moved here. After the pawn pushes, screw going here, I should have immediately orbited to here. 
and transposed in and just executed this faster. Now this way that I did it, uh, by moving this flare in quicker, is just, it puts an extra flare into the mix that wouldn't have been otherwise, and I tend to think this is a little bit better in the long term, but we'll see. Flares here, pawn forward, flare there. They push this pawn. Best move here is actually knight, because after flare trade, bishop, son, uh, the rook and the queen are mutually protecting each other, and every pawn and the knight is also covered. I also want to point out that this move, which threatened this flare, ends up mattering quite a bit later, because due to the pawn's battlefield movement back then, it protects this square. But in the game, this is what happened. Uh, I immediately orbited the other flare in. Bishop capture, flare capture, queen over. Sun moves out in order to reinforce. The knight jumps in the way, and I orbit the other flare in to reinforce. Pawn comes up. And right here is the third critical point of the game, where you have to find the right moves where Medieval comes up and still wins the game. Even just mentally comparing this to what I want to do. I give up. Here's, here's, here's a cross cut of like six hours spent trying to analyze this game. Enjoy. Oh fuck. Oh, my brain. It has so many wrinkles. Oh, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one goes there. I'm just saying that this square is this square. Oh, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. No, it, you didn't. You'll see in the recording, I accidentally hit the back button instead of the undo button. And it hurt you? Yeah. Psychological warfare noted. Knick knack, frick frack, give a dog a bone? That square. This square, these two squares, it wants to be on this square. On <laughs> these squares from behind, so don't take it too seriously. It's bad juju. I don't know which is better. I already have a really good move. It's gross. I don't even have to do anything fancy. Looking for really ballsy plays that max aggression. <laughs> Big fuck. Okay, well, that was interesting as I drop a hundreds of dollar keyboard and mouse combination from my cord getting stuck on the keyboard thing, and the keyboard happens to be attached to the mouse, and everything just falls over. Super professional here. God. At least it's still recording. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, yeah. let's go back. What if I had this on? Twin Sons is weak, Joseph said. <laughs> that is something I've said. <laughs> now he knows better. That's going to be the quote under my developer headshot. And the, problem with, the problem with Twin Suns is you have to play it a lot before you can actually use it. But, oh yeah, it has a very high skill ceiling. Very low skill floor, like barrier to entry is super low. But the skill ceiling is way up there. I keep going off on tangents. What's Pawn there give me? What's Pawn here give you? Uh, a dead pawn, a dead bishop, a dead rook, and a dead flare. And then my flares are mutually protecting each other with a queen here. And a dead bishop for a flare. But that gives me a lot of influence on your starting board. Oh boy. Orbit. Capture. Capture. Yes. Orbit. It would be on the same idea, this square and this square, which, no. Uh, actually, this square and this square would be the ones? No. 
I'm terrible at this. This square, this square. Absolutely. 100%. Which might be pretty bad for me, to be honest. All right, so... And then there's... Pawn to here. Okay, pawn there? Yep, yeah, pawn to here. Your move. Did I go too deep? What do you mean, did you go too deep? Into your territory without more backup. Potentially. Maybe. That's what I'm hoping for. Maybe, maybe. It's not cut and dry, that's for sure. There's ideas of flare capture, queen capture, maybe? No. What if I do that? Yeah, what if I just throw this flare into here? Queen has his pick of the litter. Then what? Nothing? Queen would really pick this one, because if queen picks this one, then flare takes what? So queen would capture here. Okay. Especially since it's checked, so that is a forced move. Oh yeah, that is checked, so I would have to capture it. And forced moves are beautiful. Okay, here's here's an argument. If I move my queen here, I'm threatening to come in and nearly mate this whole shebang. So it would be queen capture, or sun capture, queen capture, flare capture, titan can't. So there's just a flare here and here. But this flare would be dead before this. So this flare actually does die. So I'm a turn slow to have this column locked down with my son, which looks like it's what I need. Very astute observation. If at any point Twin Sons is given an extra free turn for no reason, I'm not going to bring that up for any reason at all. If, if Twin Sons just has one more turn, they win the game on the spot. Totally don't accidentally give Twin Sons a free turn several times during my six-hour analysis. But this is such a fun idea. Just a cool idea. Yeah, the sun here is just pawn capture square. The first mm -hmm. And then the question is, can I follow up properly? <sighs> so sun here, flare dies, flare here. Can you do anything about that? Well, then this flare is threatened. Oh, well. This flare just dies to that queen. This flare is... So no, but you, you can't kill this flare with the queen because then I mate you with this sun. So this queen is actually stuck here protecting this pawn. So this flare actually gets to survive an extra turn and can then come in and join the attack. And my sun doing this is still a threat, and then they trade off. My so flares are protecting each other here. Oh, that is awesome. Okay, yeah, I'm doing this. Okay. The idea is flare captures or pawn captures flare right now. I sacrifice this flare for tempo to orbit a flare in. And you can stop that tempo by moving your knight here, but then I would save my flare and still have the threat of sun in, and then I just I actually still mate you, so you have to capture this flare if you don't. Okay. You say this stuff again. You want me to walk you through it? Yeah. So pawn captures flare. Flare is orbited from my side of the board to here. You can't capture this flare because sun capture pawn is just mate in that case. So, since you can't do that, you have to find something else to do. I'm still targeting your rook for free at any time I can bail and just kill it. So I'm threatening both mate and killing the rook. What about knight to here? Knight there does nothing because, well... It actually makes this flare able to die. So it's no longer mate, but then this flare can move in, for example. And then my flares are just protecting each other here. Yeah, but once this knight's here, then knight captures sun. Oh, so you were targeting my sun. Yeah, I'd be targeting your sun. I totally just blundered that sun. And then... Uh, okay, so knight target... Sun, so everything up to this point has to either be a sun movement after that or a check. So, current path is I capture with the pawn and you orbit in the flare. Yes. And I can move the knight in. Yeah, and if you move the knight in, it's not as clear what happens next, other than flare here, pawn here, because this is check, so you have to capture. Flare here. That's also check again, so you have to move. And then potentially flare captures queen or some other movement. But now my son has a laser vision on these two the moment the flare moves. So 
and then it says flare is here. You can't move there or there. So this is your only move for the Titan. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna type this out. I'm gonna type this out. Uh, knight here, f4, pawn five, f6. Why wouldn't it, why wouldn't f4 capture this pawn? Um, f4 wouldn't capture this pawn because it's not check. Okay, so f4 is trying to. Force yeah, because if I don't, if I do this, knight captures sun. Okay, so f4, pawn five, f6. And then that's actually mate well, from the looks well, of it. F2 goes to F6, right? This pawn going F6 to F6 is there, mate. Going to F6. F6 is mate. Straight up. But F6 wasn't mate. And things were about to get a whole lot more complicated. Mate in 3. Twin Sons Edition. We, we could play it out, see if you can find something better. But my if you capture this pawn and Flare goes here, how do you stop Flare F6? Oh, because you can maybe capture this now, but then if you do sun captures pawn, which is why we determined you can't kill off this flare. Oh. Uh. Well, okay, hold on. No. Flare, no. Pawn one captures flare. Mm hmm This flare orbits to flare two. Yes. Knight moves to three. Okay. This flare... Goes here. This is F4. Four. F4. And then yeah. pawn this five. This goes to f four. Pawn goes to f five. This flare goes to f six. So this flare isn't here. Anymore. No, it's so not. Have to do anything? With it. Well, f six is mate. No, it's not. This pawn's here. We're stupid. This pawn's here. This yeah. pawn. Okay, so that whole line so doesn't work. Then p seven. We can back all the way up, and I don't lose well, my flare because of pawn seven. I'm. Winning in this position. So K3 is a brilliant move. I have to leave in about 15 minutes. <sighs> Alright, let's let's break down all of this back to where it's at and leave it on my turn. I'm going to analyze this position for a while. That's a hell of an understatement. I have a beard now, dude. <laughs> I'm going way down the rabbit hole. I'm just going to record the whole thought process. Because, theoretically, if what we're worried about is true, this should just win for Twin Sons, as it did in our second if, and third games. This is the kind... we're worried about is true? If Twin Sons can just aggro the shit out of everything and win, there's no reason that having this much influence on your board... With the, the, the wooden shields being all the highlight cells, yeah. right? If I, I am fully on the offensive. I am fully developed. I am fully ready to engage your board. But it, but with S0, you get screwed. S0, I get screwed, but that doesn't mean things like this square with this sun don't work, or um, moving here for ideas, or... Throwing my sun in, moving my flares in different ways. I'm glad we started recording these, because especially with Twin Suns. Well, okay, I suppose just because we're actually doing balance testing, we're trying to figure this stuff out. We're actually looking at it. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, we probably could figure it out stuff like this, you know, 20 games ago. Uh. Fuck. Sun Zero. <laughs> Check. Pawn capture. Does uh, nothing. Why? <laughs> Develops a rook. You're welcome. God damn it. Alright, I'm I need to take a step back from this position. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, come back in like five minutes and I know you won't be here to discuss because you have to go. Hope you have a good time. Yeah. So yeah, it's a good thing though that we've gotten stuff for it, because we can go back and like look at our positions and have this for other people to look at too. You know what? I'm gonna mark that it's my turn. I'm going oh, to a... right. Yeah. I'm going to update, process, and post this video and ask Liam to look at it because my brain's fried right now. I yeah, I have um... I have reached critical mass. Treat it as a puzzle. Twin sons to play and win. And here's the position. Twin Sons to play and win. For the record, 
sun here doesn't work apparently. We could give this to. We could probably share this with the full playtester group. Actually, you want to share th this video with my stupid head and breaking my keyboard almost. <laughs> I would need to edit it. I'm gonna go. I'll let you um, do your match with Shane. Bye, Joseph. Bye, Ron. Okay, hear me out. Flare here. Ooh. Okay. That's an idea. F, F0. Just immediately. And then just walk the... F it's a... F it's a flare stack. It's a in the middle of the enemy's entire army flare stack. Because what, what do you do to, with F0? It still covers everything. It still threatens all sorts of shit. S0 is still coming. Now with mate there. Oh, fuck. No, S0 is not coming because... What do you do? Oh. Oh. That's... That's the question. So... Oh, hey, Shane. What does Medieval do? Because this orbit is still coming. This is still a thing, potentially. S0 is possible still, but now I'm not down a flare. But now this square isn't a threat. This is a threat, potentially. What the hell are you talking about? I am looking... Okay, go to Bravo Juliet 269 on Games 2. Bravo Juliet 269? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the way you're laughing. We're looking at a Twin Suns versus Medieval game. That I have... That I am fully treating as a puzzle. Twin Suns to one? play and win. Yeah, this one. Twin Suns to play and sure. win. Do you want to win? Twin Suns to play and win. Because Mate should be coming in the next four or five moves. Tops. <laughs> But the, there's a lot of problems. So we found that sun here doesn't work, right? We also found that uh, flare here immediately doesn't work. But there's sun here is a very interesting line that only doesn't work because this pawn protects this square, which this pawn protecting this square is preventing an entire exchange of involving flares here, flares here, and then sometimes mate, depending on if the knight has moved here to stop the sun or not. The sun here would just win if knight didn't go here. And then sun here still doesn't work because this nice little flare exchange gets captured by this pawn at the end. And then I guess sun could move forward and it's not completely discounted? Well, um... Well, if sun goes here, nothing could attack it, right? So it's just chilling. Yes. No, we, we already went down that line. Right now I'm looking at the D4 pawn to B6. Or D4 flare to B6. So F0. Pawn is what is currently Good. there. This is move 0, F0. Right? What would be the point of moving there? Um, to get it to not die to this pawn. And then to set up to orbit this flare in. And then potentially do wild shit involving this square and the sun's coming to attack. Wait, so the only thing you're worried about, though, is this pawn capturing that square, right? Hey, wait a sec. Okay, hear me out. Mm -hmm. So if flare's here, and then the other flare's here, what's stopping me from doing the same thing? Oh, if I do S0, knight has to move here. Or knight has to move here. And I'm threatening mate just right there off the back. Okay, so what does medieval do after flare here? Flare goes there? Yes. Mm. Which flare goes there? This one? Yes. 
the one currently targeted by the pawn. You technically have a turn, a, a turn of uh, a lull in the storm. You don't have any major tempo against you, but there's two flares way up in your business, ready to fucking wreck shit. And you technically can, can trade a knight it. here. You move your knight back to target it. Yes, to target the flare. Okay, let's let's look at it. K one. I my instincts tell me that's a bad move, but I don't immediately see why. Okay. So let's. What's your next move? Okay, so I have a couple options. This is option mm -hmm. one. This is option two. Which is specifically the L, L flare orbiting in, right? I, moving this over would be a, not a mistake necessarily. Oh, this is interesting. So if Sun here, right, you capturing is a, is bad because now Sun here. Do do oh, it's not completely terrible. Yeah, it is. If you move your son there, I'll take that. You'll take that. I'll take your son. You'll take my uh, my queen. I'll take your flare. Now, all of your push-ups are gone and one of your sons. There's a follow-up. The flare immediately puts you in check right here, forking your titan and this rook at the end of that. Okay, but you won't have that. Well, hold on. This I'm flare is this one. There. The L flare okay. orbits in around this sun. Okay. And I get your rook and immediately threaten to get your bishop as well. And you are down a queen, a knight, a pawn, a rook, and I am down a sun, a flare, or a sun and two flares for a queen, a knight, a pawn, and a rook, and potentially a bishop, while I still have tempo to do things, I guess. Yeah, so, and the flare targeting these, the sun is here, but your titan's there, and this is an open line, so I can follow this, this check. You probably would move closer. You might move right back where you started, because that's a safe-ish square. No, because this is a thing. Oh boy, this line goes deep. Let's let's just let's just start typing it out. Okay, so sun two is the line we're looking at, and you want to do the night captures line. Yes. So if that night captures, so that's night capture. one. No, my other flare would capture first. Okay, well, the so sun capturing capture. first is. Sun capturing first is more force because it's check. Mm -hmm. oh, right on so okay. yeah. Not K1. K3. S4. F5. MT6. Hold on. Instead of the Titan going there. Instead of the Titan capturing my flare, you want to leave the flare alive? Yes. Okay. We'll leave that flare there for a second. And we'll focus on damage control to prevent that from going in. We'll move our knight there. Okay. That way, you're st or my, my Titan's still targeting that, so you have to move that, so I have tempo. You can't move that flare for him, so I'm protecting that area. Understood. My bishop is protecting the knight, so you can't kill it with anything. Well, this sun, well, this knight and this flare are no longer here, so sun here would be my follow. S seven. So now moving this flare will check the titan in the current form. So I can sure. move it essentially anywhere to like kill off your remaining rook, 
and then I would just move my pawn here, preventing that, and it's protected by that pawn. Okay, so that's not the best. What about... Yeah, I don't want you to develop that. But it opens this square back up again, which is interesting. Yeah, sun here is much stronger because it opens up more orbit lines. Because now this flare could potentially orbit in uh, here if that pawn's ever not there. So S7 is here instead. Okay. So it won't be check, but now my son holds the flare. So your damage control prevented this guy from coming in there, but now mm -hmm. I'm threatening for this guy to come in there instead. So then I can move my rook here and protect that whole line. Yes, but... Or, well, at son least here? Square, but my pawn's still there, so eventually I'll move that pawn out of the way, possibly up to there, so that he can protect the whole row. Hold up. So you're saying okay. Rook 8 to prevent that orbit? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then Sun 9. So now I am directly protecting this square, uh, this square potentially, definitely this one. And I would be willing okay, to... Okay, but because your son's up there, you can no longer orbit that in anyways. That's true, because I don't have the backup sun like I did earlier on sun 2. Exactly. But, now hear me out. Mm -hmm. Nothing's stopping me from going to this square after sun 2. And just doing that whole thing much closer without you being able to put the pawn in the way. You're but, saying after sun 2, you go here? Well, what do you do after S9? Oh, after S9? Yeah. Um, let's see. So these two are just chilling back here. They never get orbited in. This I point. could develop my pawn. You want to develop so this way, pawn? That's protected. And I can move up this one later to block you from getting in. And it's protected already. This is the point where Shane and I kept looking at something when we didn't need to. He captured and this was check. We didn't see this at the time. Now, ignoring that, right, in this position, even with this and this check, king moving out of the way, this is probably best move. Even with all of that being said, he has a rook for each of my flares, and once they are anywhere close to the king, my flares are worth about seven to his five. I have a son, which is, you know, a queen to his bishop, and he still has another minor in the knight and some pawns. So it's not completely lost. It's a playable position, but Twin Sons is still winning as long as they decide to, you know, even take things halfway slow, and there's problems. But again, Twin Sons is still winning in this position. That being said, uh, five months later I come in and do a deeper evaluation where I actually try to find lines. This isn't what I end up following. I end up uh, deciding that in this position, taking with the flare first is stronger. And that's that. Mostly due to if sun or if queen captures, this is capturing a rook with check, and and that means that this knight capture followed by this. If you capture with the queen, it's a blunder. Um, however, if you capture with the flare, um, a you're threatening mate in one, and b if queen captures, uh, sun cannot move to capture due to check. However, it is also true that this son can reinforce, offering a trade of queens, and after the trade of queens, this rook is coming under pressure and probably soon to die. Not only that, but since this son is alive, you're also threatening to move this in. Overall, this is the key point in the game, and if you capture with Sun, it's a blunder, because there's a lot of things going on here. 
we're playing a game. We're going to continue to play this game. Every time a video like this makes me lose my mind trying to edit it. It's, it's really simple. Heads, we flip a coin. If, fuck. <laughs> we flip a coin. If heads, you subscribe if you're not. If tails, you unsubscribe if you are. No cheating. No cheating for me either. I, I know I'm editing this and I have to look for a coin, but I promise you that first coin flip is the take. I have to find a fucking coin. Hold on. For your and my sanity, I'm going to be releasing the rest of the analysis in a time lapse in the near future. Look out for part two. have a big head and little arms. I just think that maybe this plan wasn't thought through. I may not have coins, but you know what? I always have dice. Uh, evens is heads, odds is tails. 16 heads. I don't remember what that said. But you do. Have a good one. At 100 subscribers, I want to do something special. Leave a comment down below what you think that should be.